It's big. I mean, you can't ignore it. It's, it's size. And uh, it was billed as the largest color transparency in the world, which it was. No matter which direction you came in from, it was an awesome shock when you saw that great photograph. And people would just walk in and turn around if they were coming in the opposite direction and just go, ah, you know. <laughs> that was a nice, nice feeling. I had more fun watching people become startled as they were walking through with their morning paper and their cup of coffee and suddenly stop right on and look up and just about drop their coffee. <laughs> we would just stand around listening to people and people would actually stand there and point out each baby and make comments. Very impressive for a guy that uh, never thought that he'd be working for Kodak, much less having one of my pictures uh, up in Grand Central Station for all those tens of thousands of commuters to see every day. It was very impressive. It really was an accident. It wasn't planned. You know, I know most of the coloramas are pretty much planned for an event or purpose, but this, this one just went along and became a colorama even though at the beginning uh, it didn't seem like it was going to make it. My daughter was pregnant for her first child and my first grandchild. And um, after the baby was born, um, she had been in a, a birthing class and she was able to um, stay in contact with some of the parents. Got all the babies together on her living room sofa and um, they were leaning every which way. It was, it was kind of comical, but I thought, my God, that, that is really great. That would be a, a great color on because the format was perfect. And so very excitedly, I went in to see my boss, Lee Howick, and uh, we talked about it. He said, this would make a great color on I said, Sam, I like the idea of the little babies but these are little pug uglies. You know, they're only three or four months old. They don't do anything, you know. In the meantime, Marty Szymanski was one of our photographer assistants. He was sort of my uh, partner in, in crime here because we both sort of ganged up on Lee Howick and said, we gotta do this, we've gotta do this. And finally I said, okay, Sam, if you feel this strongly, We'll do it. We'll do it your way. I'm reluctant. <laughs> and not only that, but this thing has to go on our budget. So he gave us a small sum of money, uh, really small in comparison to what some of the color has cost. It's just amazing the way it uh, worked because we closed off the whole studio for the day. He had the, the whole studio was turned into a nursery one day. And we even had nurses come down from the medical department just as, for safety's sake. The place smelled like hell. So we ended up having 15 babies, hoping that out of the 15 babies we had, we would end up with maybe seven or eight or nine at a time, which we did for a while. We were only using up, up to seven or eight at a time. I don't know whether it was Marty or myself that said, let's get them all in there, just for one shot. And they did that, ran out of the picture. We were able to take three shots of all 15 of them. And that's what we used. So we had some prints made of that and um, went into our boss and showed him and he thought it was pretty good too. He really liked it. And he did it, he worked. <laughs> and I told him later on, I said, Sam, that's the greatest color ram I think I've ever seen. <laughs> and it was not a shame to admit that he was right and I was wrong. And he must have taken it upstairs somewhere because a few days later, um, I got a note saying, no, we're not interested at this time, maybe at a later date. Well, at that time, we were really more into a sports program rather than birthday parties and kids and stuff like that. So uh, it was a hard sell. 
until it was an, a Kodak ad, just for Kodak, and you know, no film, no camera, or anything, just Kodak, on all of the Toronto buses uh, as a poster. And uh, an article in Canada, Kodakery, later on said that uh, it was the most sought after and, and stolen photograph in the transit company. They kept putting them up and they kept taking them down. They, they were in such de demand. Well, when that story got in the Kodakery, the people upstairs sort of changed their mind. And uh, right away it became a colorama. And I got to go to New York to see that one too. Five years ago, Kodak's giant colorama image of 15 newborn children became a hit with the public and a photo classic. Now the company is hoping to make an update photo to remind film buyers how fast time flies. Let's practice. Let's practice. Parents watched the studio action on a TV monitor. Many were hoping the day would go better than the last attempt to make an update picture. Uh, they're in the terrible twos. Uh, we were trying to ride tricycles or uh, other toys, and the kids just didn't want to stay still. Uh, as a matter of fact, I don't even think Kodak even promoted that picture. Okay, here we go. Pictures, okay. Before the morning ended, more than a dozen photographs were made. It's too soon to know if this will be another classic or even a Kodak colorama. But Sam Campanero says he hopes to be around for another session when the group goes to the high school prom. David Burns, New Center 13. The dream to get them all together at 16 um, didn't, didn't happen for several reasons. I was retired, and uh, the colorama, sadly, was gone. So how we would use this as a Kodak advertisement would be uh, a question. But I'm still hopeful that we can get them together in this digital age. I mean, you know, I'm not that old. I'm only 70. In November, I'll be 76. So, you know, I can, I can go on a little, lo a little longer.